Hey everybody and welcome back to SCDC ENT Presents The Age Woman and I am that lady Miss Nicole coming at you today with some more words of wisdom and advice and today I want to talk to you ladies about and gentlemen hi to my male uh, listeners today I want to talk to you ladies about becoming your mother <laughs> dum 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 Covering your mother is the worst mistake that you could ever make in life, period. <laughs> why? Because why it may seem that mama was just this great powerhouse, nine times out of ten or eight times out of ten, mama is alone with no man, but she raised her kids and she raised her daughters and she raised this here, but she ain't got no man. And unfortunately, that is the story of men. And the ones that do have a man is unhappy and feel like they done settled most of the time. You know, it's a remnant of us that's happy and cordial and, you know, living our best life with, with our men. And, you know, it's a few of them. There ain't a whole lot, but it is a few women that, that did last, you know, and keep their man alive and healthy to live out day time so shout out to all of them you know drop drop us girls some secrets so we can learn what we need to do to uh to really be to really be the woman that these men need in the in the midst of their troubles and you know just to be somebody a man can walk with through through his life you know our parents uh, first of all, we already know we was raised with a slavery mentality. We was raised with the Willie Lynch. And the whole point of the Willie Lynch letter was, and the whole agenda was to destroy the women. That if you got the black women, that you, then you got the whole black culture. Period. And it's not, it's not no lie. You never see any other nation put their women before their men but, the, but our culture. We, we've just, oh, the women, the women, the women. And we have gotten, we have just drinking that shit like Kool-Aid with our pinkies hanging out. We just sipping it. Oh, we wonderful. But <clears throat> while we run around here with the biggest butts and the nicest shapes and the prettiest smiles and the glow in the skin, don't nobody want us. Don't nobody want us. They'll smash us anytime. Smash and smash and dash. Give us all the money we want, and we think we're doing something because we could pull a few 20s out of a man wallet. We done destroyed ourselves, and I think it to the point that you go, you already like your mama. You just don't know it. Same, the same fears and judgments and, and things that she did, you done learned from them, and you learned to them to your demise. Because you learned them from an understanding that it was the man's fault when you didn't even understand that really the women control the show. You know? The women control the show. So you learn your, the way that you think, the, the thoughts that you think you know is really from a, a scar perspective. And it's to your default. Because the perceptions and the things that you've experienced... Yeah, it has shaped your judgment, but it, your judgment is based on your intellect and not actually what the truth is. Remember, there always are multiple sides to any story, and not just one version is the truth. Because the, the, the truth is based on how a, piece, a person perceives it. So it's their version, the other person's version, and then there's what it really is. And, so, and as a child, you don't understand what it really is. So, being that you don't really understand what it is or what it was, you just in the middle. And I'm going to break that down when I come back after these messages. Hey everybody, and welcome back. And today we're talking about not becoming your mother. And so you have to understand that everything that you saw was based on your perception. And as you gotten older, your perception also caused you to believe that you understand what it really was. And you really don't. 
you really don't understand the dynamics and the things that went on in your house with your mom because when you really understand how the woolly lit syndrome has destroyed our women this is a generational thing your mom is the woman because of the woman her mom was and your her your grandmama is the reason is the way she was because of the way her mama was imagine if her mama her mama her mama was uh, the, the the freak of the family because she was a slut fast ass dancing in the juke joint all night and she passed her neglectful mothering skills all the way forward to today and bits and pieces of us adapt those behaviors every single generation and on top of that we still try to think that we know what's best based on what america tells us because we done been lied to so much we just like a chicken with our hair cut off really running around looking for the truth and then when we finally finally hear the truth we don't accept it so we continue to run around with a chicken like with our heads cut off being in a relationship is not a real hard thing for a person that wants to be in a relationship because the first thing that you got to understand that no matter where you go in life you got to learn respect respect is due to a dog if you can go on the white man's job and respect him and white and respect your white colleagues certainly you can respect your husband or the person whose cock you put in your mouth from time to time you have to be able to respect the person first and and through you giving respect you're going to get respect if you don't carry yourself with respect if you don't run your mouth like you got respect if you don't have no honor and no dignity and no class a lot of us our women have forgotten that class is such a necessary thing don't no man want a whore you got tattoos all over your face and your chest like you some kind of monstrous warrior bitch i don't know what's going on but that is not sexy coconut oil and sea salt rub it in there take them things off just Rub that stuff in there, leave it on thick till them things dissolve, because it's not sexy. It never has been, and I don't know who gave us permission to even do that. You know? You went you went you went past your mom and them with that there, because your mom and them was never getting tattoos all on their neck. They just weren't doing that. They were just drunk freak bitches at the club all night. See, that's the culture that we grew up in. At least I did. I'm a 70s. So y'all not too far off. We grew up with our mamas coming, learning to go out to the club, leaving us home with our siblings, taking care of them, and she doing what she want to do. And then wonder why daddy not home no more. Daddy not there no more because mama's a whore, and she want to go do her thing. Now daddy's the whore, and he want to go out and do his thing. Or they all sneaky drug addicts, and one just take it too far with the drugs, and they just, they just walk off into the drug path for the rest of their life. You know, the story don't really, it doesn't really change. And one just stupid. You got that parent that just go to jail and be locked up the whole time. Just totally MIA. So we're left to do a lot of assuming is what I'm saying. We're left to draw a lot of conclusions to a lot of things and never really get facts about what things really are. So we're just left to figure the shit out. And a lot of times our conclusions don't be right. But we hold on to those conclusions like they facts, and facts matter because people have to be held accountable for their decisions and the actions that they do and because they affect us. And once we understand what the truth is about a situation, we have the obligation to understand that we need to fix whatever the problem was that got us to that, that situation from the beginning. And... We have to, number one, go back to loving our man. I don't understand what is wrong with being a cheerleader for your man. What's wrong with if your man is weak in a, in a certain area? What's wrong with you building him up saying, hey, you know, you can do this. Or, hey, I want to see you do that. Or, hey, I support this. And I mean, what's wrong with that? And without, without you saying, well, he got to do it for me first. Nah. Nah. Sometimes I don't expect when I put a tomato plant in the ground, I don't just expect the tomato plant to just give me a tomato right there on the spot as soon as I put it in the ground. It takes time. I got to water it. I got to love it. I got to stop the bugs from eating on it. I got to make sure it's healthy and keep the disease back off it. I got to do all that. All that. Okay? So when you know that you got to do all that, 
you definitely understand what you you have to understand that that's the same way as what a man if you don't put nothing into your man you're not gonna get nothing out of him you know you want your man to be successful send him back to school encourage him to take a trade there's many things that you could do besides just sit here and cut him cut him down and, and talk crap and talk trash to him and be disrespectful and act like he ain't nobody there's a reason why they set up to be unattractive to us and unappealing because we all feel like well if we can do it they can do it too and it's not like that because it's not easy and common for everybody to go to school and get a degree because if that was the case everybody would have one so it's not a common thing so yes if you are the one that was able to go to school and and get a degree bravo and just be prepared to take care of your man and your family (laughs) period you want you clearly you make more money clearly you make more money so what is the problem if you make more money if you the breadwinner in the family clearly you should be the one to pay most of the bills and why do you have a problem with that like that's a bad thing you done pushed out these damn kids who gonna take care of them you want him to do it like that's just what he's supposed to do huh y'all some selfish ass women you selfish completely selfish i ain't never seen nobody that want to have kids but only feel like they don't have to suffer well, you got to support them a hundred percent every damn dollar you got is not yours it belongs to your children period point blank fuck your happiness at that point once you start birthing children fuck your happiness and with that i'll be right back after these messages Hey everybody and welcome back. And today we're I'm trying to help you not become like your mama. And another thing, so let's let's continue on with this, you know. And then we get to this here. What my kids, they about to be 17 and 18. They need a job. Why? Why they need a job? Why can't they continue to go to school and you just support them while they in school and help them out and love them on through? Ain't nobody finished just because they turn 18 years old. Ain't nobody grown to 18. That's where you keep failing at. That's where you failed at because your mom and them told you you was grown to 18. You go do what you want to do. No, you cannot. You still need guidance to get off the porch. Yes, it's time for you to start walking, you know, the old term, jumping off the porch. It's time for you to get to the stairs so you can ha- so I can help you walk down the porch, not jump off the porch. We're not doing that no more. Because jumping off the porch is what's got us all jacked up. That's why most of our, us black women have children at young ages and they would miss our whole life. Because we spending it trying to live our best life, but we got four, five kids. Once you push out that first baby, ain't no more living your best life. Unless you just a selfish witch. Period. And that's and, and guess what? And that's and that's what make you just like your mama. That's what make you like your mama. Because your mama, our parents forgot about us. They forgot that they were supposed to be building something for us. They were so busy trying to chase their feelings and what they want and what they looking for and they day 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 that they forgot to raise us up with something. They forgot to leave us something. They forgot to protect us from something. So that's why we have a lot of people in our community that's broken and don't know whether they're coming or going. Why they still calling themselves the color in a crayon box when you cannot take a a plane back to the land of black. There is no land of black. And you got it and you got them. We we sleep as a people. We don't care about anything. And we still have the audacity to feel like we better than somebody. Unless you, if you ain't got a man, hang your head down. If a man is not actively caught in you and trying to make you into his woman, hang your head down. If you got boy, if you always the bridesmaid and never the bride, hang your head down. If you think that kicking it with your mom and them is more important than you setting yourself up to be ready for a man, hang your head down. If you hollering about, I'm an independent woman, I can do whatever I want, I can go wherever I want, hang your head down. Because there ain't no pride in you. Because a woman will be known by her works. Who's the mother of Jordan? Michael Jordan. I want to shake her hand. 
because she did some work with that thing. She loved that thing right on out the door till he just became a, a beautiful basketball player and shit. I ain't talking about what they turned him into. I'm talking about what he is. If I could turn my son into the greatest welder in the world, the greatest welder in the house, on the block, I'm happy. Because that's more than what my people gave me when I was trying to become something or when it was my time to become something. We have to stop. We have to stop being so selfish and only caring about ourselves because caring about ourselves is what's going to always have us behind the boat. If you don't, if you ain't had all your fun while you young at the club, once you have that child, it is no longer about you. It is all about the child. Then, and, and, the, and the greatest thing that you could do is try to have a, ch- a family for your child. Not just say, oh, I want it. Go for it. Watch your mouth. Do what it takes to keep that. Not say, oh, well, I tried. No, do it. Like you do, like you do the nene. Learn, learn how to be a woman that keeps a man like you learn how to put them lace fronts on your head. How you learn to paint that makeup on your face like that makes you beautiful. Like that has anything to do with the beauty that dwells within you. It has nothing to do with it. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. You can't paint a face on yourself and expect some man to want to fuck with you because of how you, because they don't care about that. You know what he care about? That if my test results read that I got cancer the next day and I can't fuck you no more, I can't go to work, I'm going to have an attitude all the time, I'm going to be sick. Is you going to be there? Is you going to fuck with my brother? Or are you going to go be out here seeking comfort from somebody else? Is you going to be there? That's what they want to know. Can you put your feelings aside and do what's right by me and love me through thick and thin? Like I would do you to the best of my ability. Could you love me to the best of, could you love me to the best of your ability? Could I trust you with my money? Could I trust you not to rob me? Could I trust you not to to rob me and lie to me and rob and hurt my kids and hurt our kids? Could I trust you like that? That's what they want to know. It ain't none of y'all putting up nothing like that. Half of y'all still gluing hair onto your head. You can't even fathom anything like that, you know? You're too selfish because really all you expecting is what you going to get out the deal. Yo, 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 you place, you place true value in, in dollar. You put a dollar sign on value. You put a dollar sign on value. And dollars got nothing to do with value. When, when it comes to a person, how much you worth don't mean nothing. <laughs> you can't take it with you. And if you an asshole poor, you an asshole rich. It don't matter. Your dollar amount don't matter. You got rich assholes and poor assholes. And they all full of shit. So that's just where we are with that one. And we'll be right back after these messages. everybody and welcome back and I'm talking about not becoming your mother and and listen trust me when I tell you that Miss Nicole understands because once I saw who my mother was I had to fight tooth and nails to shake that shit off me period I had to shake it off I had to shake it off y'all okay it was hard. I had got married when I was 18. I met a, a, a wonderful guy with the guy that they holler about, the, the, the preacher's son, you know. And that shit did not work because my mouth was fucked up. I wasn't in control of my emotions. I was just emotional, emotional feelings, this, that. I didn't know how to deal with no man. And he was a man. I didn't know how to deal with him. Because my mama had done taught me, you can say whatever you want to say out your mouth to anybody, however you want to say it, and put your feelings all over it, and get on their motherfucking nerves, and, and, yeah, she had me all fucked up, y'all. So my marriage didn't last, you know? hmm My marriage did not last. 
you know? And it wasn't because, you know, it just didn't last. It didn't, it didn't last. Because shit like that, problems, especially when it's a connection, it just don't work, you know? So I was fucked up. You know, I claimed my wrong in doing and in the shit. I was emotional. Too much, too much, too much, too much. I did the most, you know? And after him, and I'm, and one thing, but one thing about me is that I stay, I, I, I stay in relationships. I'm a relationship woman because I like to be, I like to learn and be in, in a relationship. I don't like jumping from God to God to God. That ain't never been my thing. So I may be single when I am single. It's just for a few months, um, max, <laughs> max. Because Miss Nicole don't be single for long. Because she don't have to be. Because she she likes her man. So she always makes sure she gets one. And um, and most of I always send me somebody. You know what I'm saying? He be like, it's always something about the person that day. And I know that that's, the, that's, that's it right there for right now. Okay, I got you. You know? And I know when it's time to move on. Because I'm realistic with it. I'm realistic with it. And, you know sometimes things just don't work like you would hope that they would and you know people break up and people grow and outgrow each other things happen so it's it's not a perfect situation ever nothing is forever until it's forever right until it's forever so I have uh I'm telling you guys I have actively like had this shake different things like I noticed things about as I got older I noticed things about my mother and I was like oh my god she is a damn hater you know oh my god she's really a damn hater she just she just literally just hates on people in their face and I just don't know how to deal with stuff like that you see what I'm saying I'm, I'm just not like that like because I'm not a hater like I want to see everybody do good it's enough for everybody to look good you know why would we hate on each other when when we all special and, and got talents and skills and drives and different personalities and ideas and thoughts. Period. So what's the point in, in, in hating on one another? When you the star of your own home. You know? <laughs> you the star of your own world that you create with your family. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who doesn't support you or love you out there. At the end of the day, you get whatever you get from out there and then you come home. That's where you the star at. And yeah, you can share that on social media to everybody else, but you're the star of your home. And damn if everybody else likes you. You're not here for everybody. Some people just not gonna understand who you are because everybody didn't make you and we all are not the same. You know? But a woman will be known by her works. And if your work suck, you suck and it's gonna show. Somebody raised these kids that's going around being gang members, killing our, our their own people and their brothers. Somebody raised these kids, you know? And you can't do nothing but take responsibility for it. We fucked up. We fucked up. And we raise, we raising our children who oppress us to this day, as the Bible say. Our children oppress us because they don't bring us joy. Watching them grow up, they bring us sorrow. And it's because we ain't taught them nothing. They don't even know who they is. They think they're American. <laughs> they, we don't even tell them about Martin Luther King and how they did Martin Luther King. Even though they claim to love Martin Luther King, they still put a bullet in his head. But we don't tell our kids the truth because we don't even want to hear the truth. No. Anytime you start living a lie so much, that you just feel like you don't want to hear the truth, you just want to live in your own world, you might as well just unplug the TV. Because everybody shit stinks. Everybody. Mine too. But guess what? You better be willing to know that and fix it. Because ain't nobody catering to that shit. Especially not no man. Because remember, you can't expect him to be some knight in shining armor fart and fairy dust for you if you don't plan on fart and fairy dust for him because that's some magical shit and when y'all doing all that fart and the fairy dust can you please show me a, a record that because i like to know i just you know want to know what it smell like you know how'd you manage to fart the fairy dust what about the glitter did it hurt it a little bit you know just i just want to know all that 
because <laughs> I think it would be very interesting. <laughs> Man, you know what I'm saying? You have to fight. And I and I, like I said, I understand some of us think, oh. Okay, so I'm going to be right back after these messages. Hey everybody and welcome back and we are talking about not becoming our mothers and you know what is what is so this this is how I think this is how I think that you should think and you should if you have an answer to this question I don't know what's wrong with you but what is it in what is it in just immersing yourself in loving and in uplifting and respecting and honoring your man the man in your life what is so radical and crazy about that why are you afraid of the word obey why are you afraid of rules why are you afraid of masculinity when don't nobody want some lame wimpy dude trying to house that cooter at night you like a grown man to handle that so why do you think that men why do you think that you could just have a man to sex you like that but a man isn't actually like that that is how men are men are aggressive men have us this thing called testosterone we have estrogen so their testosterone makes them go harder we are naturally born to just fall the fuck back and let them do their thing and support them. If we were, you know why, you know why one of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite women is Sherman Clump Mama. Because Sherman Clump Mama, even though he was all fat and out of weight and she overweight, she should have handled that part. But she supported him and the family no matter what. She's a cheerleader for the family. She loved the family. She gonna give her all to the family she put the best she go get the biggest piece of fat fat the biggest piece of hog maw the freshest sweet potatoes the freshest corn the freshest fattest potatoes and make all that food for her family because she loved to see her family sit down and eat and be happy why are we not like that what's wrong with thinking like that what's wrong with having your husband to the head of your table and you respecting and honoring that man because ain't nobody gonna go hard for you or do a goddamn thing for you like he will what's wrong with that what's wrong with saying I got me a good way y'all and showing the world that through just your respect and honor that you give him that's what that, that's what we supposed to be doing we supposed to be humble that's, I mean, if any of y'all read the Bible, if you read anything other than that in the Bible, please let me know. Because I do not recall no scripture in there that tells us that we're supposed to be warrior independent bitches. Please, somebody tell me where that's at. I've never seen that. This warrior independent, we got to do this. Ain't nobody trying to hear all that damn stuff. I don't want to have to cut my own grass. I am 40, over 40 years old. Over 40, Okay. And I've cut my grass one time because my husband is, has, is, is weak and is covering from a stem cell therapy transplant. That's it. And I did all right. So I could do it if I got to, but I found somebody to do it first because I'm not cutting no grass. But some of y'all out there cutting y'all on grass. Some of y'all out here been years paying for, paying for male companionship. It's all right if you a side chick. You got him some dinner ready. It's all right if he just come over and give you some at night. But guess what? That cooter getting real old. And he done been playing you like that for many years. And he still ain't wifey. And you done cut Jethro off. Because Jethro, he got to have $100,000. But Nate, Nate don't have to have no money. Nate just bringing that wood. So you would take Nate over Jethro. Now Jethro, got he do his thing. But Nate is what you want. But Nate don't want you. So Nate just play you like you just baloney. And a lot of y'all been baloney for a long time. And it's real sad because you done been you done played yourself to the point that you that you have no vitality left to you. So really ain't no man checking for you no more. 
because you done been this dude sucker forever and done gave him everything. But the man that really loved you, he can't get nothing because he don't make enough money. Mm. I know so many bitches like that, it don't even make no sense. That's that mama shit. You done tricked on Mr. Johnny his heart. Since I know Mr. Johnny, he, he done had another woman. He ain't never claimed you. He ain't never claimed you. He always say you were just a friend. <laughs> y'all the same. And y'all falling into that same motherfucking trap. This man, you done, oh, he loved me. Because he done, I done had his baby. He Because I gave him his first son. He loved me. And you still a jump off. You got to make him come over. You got to trick him to come over. You're sad. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We have fallen so much. And it's because we just give ourselves away. We give ourselves away. You know, we, we don't keep nothing for ourselves. We don't try to cover up. We don't, I mean, if, if a man already know what you're working with, yeah, I want some of that there right there. That thing look good right there. That's how they think. That thing look good right there. I'm going to give me some of that. And she got it all in my face, so she must want me to take it. I ain't never seen young girls with bodysuits on. You ain't nothing left to the imagination. But he need, I need to want a man. First of all, you ain't going to get nothing but a fuck nigga because a nigga just want to fuck. Any nigga who see, he just want to fuck you because that's all he see. He see your vagina print out. He see your breasts. That's it. Nothing else. And you at like, <laughs> that's like a, a good thing. See, that's when you, when you, when you know when you understand the power that your body has, that your spirit has, that your mental has, you learn how to channel it in a better way. Because why would the men buy the cow when you're giving the milk for free? Don't no man have to wonder what a black woman's vagina body look like because he can just turn on the TV and see it. Bam. She busting it open for him. Busting it. What can we do? <laughs> the black woman is the most this, that, and the third. But she's the most advertised sexual person on TV. And nobody don't want her. <laughs> hey, and with that, I'm going to say shalom. <laughs>